So, starting with the last one, I'm kidding, starting with the first Mimic. You know, if she had a watch, she wouldn't have had to ask Bug Long John what time it is. Just saying. So, near the end, because the producers really badly wanted this movie to say, don't worry, the bugs are gone, we get the one fertile male. Lisa Kudrow comes upon him, yells, get away from him, you bastard, and he dies because he's too stupid to move out of the way of a subway train. A subway train that's running because the fucking glasses fixed this ancient relay. And Jeremy Northam managed to explode all the other ones and get away unscathed just because he jumped into a little puddle of water. I did like that the fucking lighter didn't work and he had to make a spark the old-fashioned way. So Spoon Kid is safe, there is no rejoicing, Mira stands there near the subway entrance, her eyes blinking go into Morse code mode, and the music wells up as she sees Jeremy Northam her boyfriend, fiancé, husband, whatever the fuck, nobody cares. And the music still doesn't realize we can't take this movie that fucking seriously. Mimic 2. So the last soldier goes on, nothing to live for, nothing to fight for, no one to even bury him once he's gone. And if I haven't already thoroughly depressed you, there's no Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny is a myth, and God is an imaginary friend for adults. I think about the other bugs. I wonder if they're happy. If they are, I want to hurt them. Like, really bad. But then the nurse gives me my medicine, and everything is sunshine again. Okay, granted, maybe I didn't pay quite as much attention to this goddamn movie as I perhaps could have, if you know, life wasn't too damn short, but was the whole ant thing even introduced in the actual movie? I saw it in a deleted scene when Remy said she's way too damn late. I had no idea who the fuck she was talking about. Now I know because I watched the deleted scenes on the DVD. In the opening, it seems to be hinted that nobody is sure that, you know, the Judas breed bugs exist, that they were genetically manipulated by scientists like me. But in the first movie, there was a fucking press conference about it. Who the hell clips scissors for an answering machine message? Yes, lady, wacko magnet and just plain wacko. Okay, so they're the fucking predator now, hanging skinned bodies upside down. What the fuck? We get goddamn POV shots. Fuck! How lame was it when it was hanging outside the window watching them? What are you writing? A fucking book, lady. What do you think? Ah, yes. What fat middle-aged man wouldn't tell a young woman who works for him that he's a dynamo in bed? The movie is barely introducing the characters before it's killing them off. They're nothing but fodder. Oh my god, it's my reflection! Don't just love how the fucking cop doesn't watch the fucking road when he's driving, but the guy who has to make tough decisions and possibly sacrifice four fucking people for the benefit of possibly the rest of the fucking world is the asshole in the movie. Wait, wait, wait. Do none of them have a fucking cell phone? This movie was made in 2001. The black kid and the horny teenager really should have cell phones, realistically. That bit where the teenager, you know, makes sure that he doesn't sweat too much and then offers the deodorant stick roll thing to the other two, they would really rather possibly be victims of the giant bugs, then get his fucking sweat into their sweat pits. What the fuck? 
may I remind you, in the first fucking movie, a couple of regular people wiped goo from the dead bugs onto them in order to not be victims of them. And to top it off, he throws the fucking stick away after it. Klasky is really good at asking annoying questions when he shouldn't. Like, there's at least once in this fucking movie where he should really shoot first and ask goddamn questions later. Okay, I'll grant that the Klasky bug surprised me, but I still didn't give a damn. I don't care about any of these characters. I will admit that Remy is kinda hot, and it was mighty nice of them to have her undress in one scene. And finally, Mimic 3 Sentinel. Okay, I'll admit that the footage of the bloody bird worked pretty damn well, it was quite disturbing, but still, it doesn't look half eaten. It looks like they put a pigeon on its back and poured red caro syrup on it and filmed it as it was laying there. Oh, we can sneak past Mom, by which I mean loudly announce that we're going out. Maybe it's just me, but isn't being a peeping Tom illegal today? Shouldn't the cop have put a stop to Marvin's peeping Tomery? Okay, them shouting, shut up Rosie, in unison was pretty funny. The going into the camera and going back out of it could have been smoother. I think there should maybe have been some CGI involved there. I did really like the revelation that we've already lost and he was just trying to sell these as a biological weapon, but it did kind of come out of nowhere, you know, there was no real setup. It was like, is one of our neighbors maybe a bug? And then, oh, wait, there is a human garbage man, but oh, there actually are a ton of bugs and we've already lost. I think that should maybe have been set up a little earlier in the movie. It's a good twist, and it works, because guess what? There are a lot of fucking bugs on this planet. We are outnumbered. Physically, we may be the dominant species on the planet, but in sheer numbers, in volume, we are not. Anyway, those were my thoughts on the Mimic Trilogy. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to return to my lab and make a pigeon rat. I know, Bart Simpson's good twin brother already made one, but he just sued them together. I want to do it with genetic manipulation, just because I think I can. Also, I want something that flies and survives a lot. Plus, it will double its efficiency at spreading disease. I have to go do that right now. Goodbye.